All right, this is part two of my complimentary color painting. Um, the first thing I'm doing is I find a separate airtight container and I'm mixing a bunch of the neutral color, so orange and blue together, to save throughout this process. And on my palette, I'm only using a little bit of that neutral at a time because I don't want to continue to mix that color over time and not have the right quantity. So I highly recommend that you do that um, throughout your painting, keeping that neutral color in a separate container um, and just using little bits of it at a time. So I'm working from the background to the foreground um, and sectioning out my painting, finishing all those values at one particular time. So I'm starting with the window in the back and mixing um, that neutral with black and white because I wanted to stick to the neutral color scheme um, that we practiced before this. I also have to say that throughout this video, um, it is very fast, but there are parts of this where the video cuts out because my iPad stops filming. So if you see things that are painted and uh, it seems like they're painted very fast without explanation, it's because my iPad went out. So again, focusing on one particular spot at a time, getting all those values. This is also gonna be beneficial because um, as your paint begins to dry, you can rest your hand on certain things or paint over certain things um, to add different texture and lines. So starting with the background and then going to the foreground. Uh, I'm working on the bookshelf next with the movies on it. And I'm going to be honest with you, I do not want to paint every single detail on every single movie cover. So what I'm doing is I'm focusing on the highlights and the shadows and the midtones. Um, just as details to add to each movie, but I'm not focusing so hard and draining my attention. As you can see, I filled it in with a mid-tone color, then went over it with um, white for the highlight, and then went back with some darker colors. So it's very gesturally painted. I'm not focusing all my attention on trying to capture that. Because again, it's not the focal point of the painting. I just need it to show realism and to show depth in my painting. So if you have some of these details, please feel free to just render them um, a little bit more simple. You can also move your uh, painting to get a little bit closer or farther away. So I was at a very odd position, so I moved my painting down and I'm using a detail brush to get some finer lines. So now I'm going into the pants, adding some value there spending a lot of time wet on wet blending and then using some dry brushing to get the texture in the jeans. So you're going to notice that uh, your color scheme is more of a brown if you're using a neutral or if you are using the highly saturated color scheme you're going to see a lot of the two colors in your um, complementary color pair. So for me you can see that there's orange in the brown especially up against that blue underpainting. So I, I've focused a lot of my time and attention on this painting. This is a very fast video, um, but this painting took me approximately two and a half days working for anywhere from two to three hours a day on this painting. So I had a very difficult composition and I wanted to focus a lot on the detail in my composition. Yours doesn't necessarily have to take as long. And also my canvas is just slightly bigger than your piece of paper. So this is day two. I, I took a, a break for a day and let everything dry. And now I'm going into what I would consider the focal point or the more difficult part of this painting, uh, which is the body and the wrinkles in the fabric. And then eventually um, my dog and my husband's face. So saving the hardest part for last because I want to devote all that attention and detail. You also want to make sure that you're not um, too tired or over this painting, so please take breaks. I take, again, several breaks during this video. And you want to work, again, in sections. Everything is, is layered. So this does take time. This painting should take you longer than any painting we've done so far in this class. And you're really focusing hard on trying to get realism. Skin tone is something that is difficult, um, especially when you first start painting it. 
and trying to get all the little details in the hand or the face, you're going to notice that sometimes you just can't do it. Sometimes it's it's beyond your, your skill level and you need more practice, and that's totally fine. Just try to render it to the best of your ability and make it look as human-like as possible. I'm also using the smallest brushes that I have. So that detail brush is definitely going to become your friend in this painting, um, particularly if you have a lot of details like mine. I also wipe off my brush pretty often. Um, I started this second day by cleaning off my palette. Uh, if you are one of those people that never cleans off your palette, maybe try it, because <laughs> it will help you start fresh and get new colors. So now I'm going into the dog and painting the value of her face. Um, so I realized that part of these proportions in the dog's face are, are not accurate to the picture. So you can see that I have to go over um, into the couch cushion and then into part of the shirt because her face was at an incorrect angle. And that's fine as you're painting and you realize, oh, this is supposed to be to the left a little bit or this is not as big as I made it. Um, that, you know, at this point, you can paint over these things and figure it out. You just have to go slowly and section it off. And the consistency of keeping that neutral color is really nice, uh, instead of having to go back and mix that neutral every single day. Now, all the values in my painting, because I mixed extra of it, um, will, will remain the same and look consistent. If you are doing the highly saturated color scheme, you will have to think a little bit harder about the uh, highlights, midtones, and shadows just because you have more options. The nice part about it, though, is that um, you can sort of make it as highly saturated as you want to. So adding more of the, the blue and the orange if I were doing a, a push or a highly saturated color scheme could really intensify my painting. But it doesn't have to. I chose a neutral color scheme because I thought that this was more of a somber, intimate um, picture to use as a reference. So this painting, again, took me several days. Um, and I obviously took breaks and looked over things. And it's important when you are doing a painting to, to take those breaks and to really um, assess what you're, you're working on because you could love something in one minute and then the next day you wake up and you're like oh this looks totally wrong or this doesn't look like the picture at all um, but the nice part about acrylic too is that it dries so fast it's kind of a blessing and a curse you can go back and, and add those necessary details so we're almost done here now I'm going into the face the last part I want to work with the face first like I did with the self-portrait because then I can paint the hair over the top of some of that skin tone. So I'm starting out with um, blocky colors for the skin tone and then choosing a detail brush to go back over with um, thinner lines but darker colors. I want to get the texture in the beard, the eyebrow, and then the hair. The hair is sort of like the um, bookcase and the fact that I'm not going to get every single strand of hair but I just want to get enough value to make it look three-dimensional and to follow some of those major strands of hair that really make up um, this space itself. So the last thing I work on is the window because I was waiting for that to dry to get those lines. And this is my final product. So you can see from the image that it is slightly tinted orange and then there's little bits of that blue peeking out from the underpainting. So this is made with all complementary colors of blue and orange and then the uh, highlights, midtones, and shadows for that. So when you're thinking about your painting, your day in the life, you really want to think about capturing realism, proportion, scale, and doing it to the best of your ability with these limited colors. Um, and again, you know, this should be reflective of you and your day and things that you see um, and making it more personal. So this will be a challenge. Take your time and definitely invest in taking breaks because it will benefit your art.